The sunflower represents a composite flower. What does that mean? It means that the flower, if we look at it, has a center disc, like so, and it has radial petals that surround that center disc. The center disc is made up of florets, and each one of those florets is a complete flower. In other words, there is a stamen and pistil to each one of them. Around the complete flowers, or florets, are radial flowers that are incomplete. They only have a, a stamen attached at the very base. They surround these florets that are the center disc. Now if we look at this sunflower from the side, you will see that there are, beneath the radial flowers, are a series of green brats, and those brats are designed to protect the flower until it opens up. You will also see that the stem and the brats have very fine hairs on them. So in the process of drawing, we have to take into consideration how to uh, replicate that surface texture that appears uh, on the sunflower itself. Looking at the disc in the center, all the florets that make up that center have what is called a Fibonacci pattern. You will see surrounding movement as the florets move towards the center of the flower and uh, create a radial pattern, uh, better known as Fibonacci pattern. These florets open from the outside in, so you'll notice that those on the outside have opened up and become very textured in appearance. Now, if you're doing a drawing for a, a botanical illustration, you can decide what viewpoint you want to use, or you can show three viewpoints. The main one would be to show the flower pretty much as a uh, frontal view, although not quite straight on because it diminishes the sense of dimension that you would get straight on. So it would be slightly three-quarter or even a little bit more three-quarter so you can see how much depth there is to this particular flower. The side profile shows us quite a bit of depth. It shows the brats and it shows the a way that the petals really are more cup-shaped in terms of their overall positioning than a flat radial disc. If we look at from the rear view, we can see how the stem is attached to the brats and how the brats surround the uh, radial petals. Once you've decided which angles to draw these sunflowers from, it will be time for you to measure and start drawing the uh, actual flower itself. For the purpose of this video, I am working with photographs so you can easily see how the process proceeds, although most of you should already know exactly how to measure and to transfer what's in front of you to uh, tracing paper uh, at, at the beginning. So I'm going to be drawing this angle, I'm going to be drawing this angle, and I'm going to be drawing this angle. As always, we want to start by measuring our width and our height. So we're going to take our dividers or a ruler. You're going to work with your actual specimen and determine your heights. As I say, I'm doing this with the photograph in order to, to make it easier for you to see what's going on. Now I'm going to measure from here to here which is the full height of our flower. And that will give us the overall real estate in which this flower will appear. I have drawn a rectangular box which our flower will 
fit into. Remember that your edges have to meet the edges of your real estate box. On a new piece of tracing paper, we're going to overlay our real estate box and we're going to start to sketch in where things seem to need to be. So I'm going to put in, first of all, an ellipse and we know that that ellipse is not going to fill the entire space but it will go from the top here it'll come around and you can measure this just to see where this is going to touch so you know that that is your uh, tip of your leaf point and if you want to make sure that your petals come in the right place you're going to you can measure up from the bottom edge of your flower in order to get things to be where you think they need to be. Our brats will come in here somewhere. Here is where these brats end. Now if they're not absolutely perfect in terms of how wide they are, you can make adjustments for that as you are going along. This first layer here now is going to be our area for our petals, our radial petals, and you're going to need to kind of figure out where that disc is, um, thinking in terms of drawing through. So that would be probably the location. Now you could probably, you can get this a little bit more easily when you are drawing from real life. So now we need a 12 o'clock position, we need a 3 o'clock position, we need a 6 o'clock position, and we need a 9 o'clock position. So we might want to work from this outer edge. Let's start with our 6 o'clock position. So that's going to come in somewhere in this area. This is our 6 o'clock position. This is our three o'clock position. This is going to be, so this is our three o'clock. This is our six o'clock. I'm moving it over a little bit. Then this will be our nine o'clock in here, which is actually fairly close to our, and then our 12 o'clock we'll do right up in here and we can tell that it does not fall quite as high as these points to the right and we can draw in what looks like our placement. So from here, now that we've got these in, in situated well, we can see that there are things that we can do and sketch in very quickly what these petals would do in relation to one another. I'm working very quickly to kind of get a feeling for the mood and the gesture of this flower in real life. At this point you can, because you've not lost your real estate diagram, you can erase if you need to and move things around very easily in order to get this to look the way you want it to look. That looks like this needs to be a little higher up. But because we have all these brats we gotta take care of also. Quite honestly, this will be a lot easier to see if you're working from the actual specimen. The point of the photography is so that you have a value study that you can use when you have to start rendering.
what I've done at this point is I have laid another piece of tracing paper over the top of the original sketch and I've taped them together so nothing shifts and I will start to draw very carefully looking at all of the contours that go into this particular specimen. I will also be working with about a 3H pencil rather than a 2H so that I get thinner lines and lighter lines that I can see more clearly uh, going forward. I'm going to work with a larger photograph in order to see the details. You probably will be able to do this without a photograph because you can use a magnifying glass in order to see the details on your subject. If you feel that it's easier for you to see what's going on, uh, I am not opposed to you referring to a photograph in order to get the fine details. So we shall begin. I'm going to start with this foreshortened petal in the front which is actually my six o'clock petal. And uh, foreshortening is really much easier than you think. All you have to do is look at it as a shape and not look at it as a petal. And it will come out the way that you want it to come out. I'm going to draw a shape that I believe is going to be the right shape for this foreshortened petal. And then I see I have more foreshortened petals here. So that's looking at the shape in relation to other shapes is the way to get the, um, the proportions correct uh, as you are starting to draw. And you might find after you've done this first drawing that you will have other changes that need to be made. So you may even have to do a third or fourth drawing in this process. What I'm finding here is that I'm finding it very hard to see what I have. So I'm going to take another sheet of tracing paper and lay it underneath again between the drawing and my uh, more finished detail drawing. So it makes it a little easier for me to see the, the shapes that I'm creating. So this is the way I'm going to go about this whole thing. Looking very carefully at the contours that I see on each one of these petals in order to get exactly the flower that I'm that I'm after. And if things are not clear in the photograph, go back to the original plant to clarify what you think is going on. So now I've pretty much redrawn this sunflower based on what I seem to think is there. I'm going to take the sketch out from underneath. And let's take a look at it. And see what else I have to do. Okay. So looking again it would have seemed to me that this shape needs to come down a little lower and then come up in order to accommodate a little bit more space for this petal here and it really needs to come out from from this bottom uh, petal right at, uh, at the top edge. I also feel that this needs to come over this way a little bit more in order to make this dark area here smaller and maybe cut this back a little bit more in this direction. Let's 
So I think I'm in pretty good shape here so that I pretty much have my sunflower as the way I need it to look. Now there are sections in here that are really vague and I'm going to have to look, it's not going to tell me on the photograph what's going on here, so I'm going to have to actually look at the flower and see what's happening. The other thing I'm not fond of, I'm not fond of this stem, but that's all we had in the market this time of the year. So I may see if I can find another sunflower that has some leaves on it or wait on this until I do have a sunflower that has leaves so that I can perhaps add a leaf in here somewhere or a leaf in the back somewhere so that this is a much more interesting drawing. There's nothing wrong with doing that as long as the structure where you're adding something makes sense in terms of the actual sunflower itself.